So soil testing is a really important part of land management and the first part of a soil testing program is soil sampling and how you do that has a big influence on how accurate and efficient your soil testing program is. So most people are familiar with taking soil samples with one of these, a foot corer or a pogo stick. It takes a 0 to 10 centimetre soil sample. You can also get longer ones to go down to 20 centimetres as well. So these are simple to use obviously, but their limitation is that they take the whole sample and averages and mixes the soil that you take within that depth. And there are problems with that. So it's important to know what's actually happening within this 10 centimetre layer because plants have to grow through it. And so we actually need to know, not the average, but what we say is the stratified conditions of that 0 to 10. And a great tool to, to do that is actually to use what we call a dig stick. So a dig stick enables us to see the profile to the depth that we've hit it into the ground. And we've used a pH indicator here to show that actually in that top 10 centimetres, the top five centimetres is actually a lot higher pH than the next five centimetres. And then 10 to 15 centimetres it becomes more acid again. So clearly averaging these 10 centimetre layers isn't telling us what a plant is experiencing. So we need to sample in smaller intervals, which isn't possible or is clumsy if using a foot corer. So whilst the dig stick enables us to see these layers, it is not the appropriate tool to sample soil to collect to send to a lab. Because one, it takes quite a long time to get a core out, because you've got to hit it in, pull it out. And then the other part is, you've got to get this soil out and into bags. And in doing that, there's a high risk that you'll contaminate one layer to the next, or not take the entire sample, which then also has an implication on the uh, accuracy of the results. So the dig stick is not the tool to collect the sample to send to the lab. So what we've been using to take our soil samples in fine increments are just simple soil cores. And uh, so you can have several of these, which makes it a little bit uh, faster to take your sample. You can pull up in a ute, take cores from around the ute, several at the same location to create bulk samples. So uh, these are just hit into the ground to the depth that you want, 30 centimetres is good. Uh, it can be done with a sledgehammer or using a post um, driver as well. So to take the core, it's as simple as making a start and then using a post driver or a sledgehammer. As I said, you can have five of them around here, so it's really quick. And then it's just a matter of pulling that core out. And a steel post puller works just as well. Sometimes you can pull them out by hand as well. So once you've got your cores, we bring them over to the ute. On the tailgate, we've got a piece of corrugated iron. We can lay our cores into the, the valleys of the corrugated iron. And we have marked here the sampling depth intervals that we want to use. In this case, we've got it marked at two and a half centimetre intervals that we use in research. But for commercial agriculture, five centimetres would be adequate. Once they're on the tray, we simply push the cores out. And this can be done pretty quickly. Importantly, we're not contaminating samples and we're going to get the depth increments quite accurately. You can use anything to push the cores out. This is just a bit of electrical conduit. Once they're on the tray, we can uh, cut the cores up into the layers that we want. In this case, we're just doing the top 20 centimetres. So we're discarding anything lower than that. But you could quite easily keep that if you want. And then if we're sampling in five centimetre depth intervals, it's just a matter of cutting the cores. And there we have a five centimetre depth interval, 15 to 20 centimetres. We can crush that up. These five cores might represent one stop within a paddock and you'd do maybe another five to get 25 cores taken that will bulk together 
to get enough sample to send off to a lab, we might end up with, if, if that's five cores, after 25 cores, you'd have half a kilo of soil, which is uh, a good amount to send off to the lab. So this method is accurate, uh, pretty hygienic. We don't have the contamination issue, uh, but it's fast, it's efficient. It's a, a good process to go through to get good data to base land management uh, decisions on, fertilizer decisions, liming decisions, um, getting enough detail with these intervals down the profile so much better than just bulking 0 to 10, 10 to 20 centimetre layers. The coring system that we've just been through uh, provides a fast and efficient way of getting soil samples in smaller depth intervals, which enables us to identify the things like, say, soil pH that may be limiting plant root ability to get through the soil that you wouldn't otherwise be able to detect. And of course, because those acid layers may, may already be in the soil, if you don't sample for them, you don't know they're there and you, you, you can't make a soil management recommendation to improve that soil. You must identify the acid layers and then you can make smart, uh, efficient decisions to ameliorate them.